Hi and welcome to the Economy. With me here, I've got Jeff Klaus, the General Manager of Intel Data Center Solutions. Hi Jeff, Hi. thanks a lot for being here with Thank me. Thank you. Uh, can we crack on straight away with Intel's stake on software-defined data centers? Yeah, so Intel has a, a, a group that is focused on software-defined infrastructure. And what that is, is essentially taking the old way of doing compute, network, and storage and putting them into a virtualized environment so that there are pools of compute, pools of network, and pools of storage so that we can more appropriately take a workload, orchestrate it and analyze that workload, and then apply the different pools of resources more efficiently to that workload. So SDI, as we call it, Software Defined Infrastructure, is really designed to have the telemetry and the smarts to be able to utilize the infrastructure more efficiently for each type of workload environment. So how do you modernize the data center? So modernizing the data center is really, in some cases, taking advantage of some of the existing infrastructure that has telemetry that customers aren't utilizing today. So we have uh, some tools, one of which is Intel Data Center Manager, that allows customers to get specific real-time power data from their, their uh, compute devices in addition to network and storage devices. So we know exactly what those devices are consuming in addition to a much broader thermal profile for each of those devices because they actually have sensors on them that are reporting that, uh, that type of data. And most customers aren't aware of the ability of their existing infrastructure to report that type of telemetry. So we're taking that low level data, we're orchestrating it and uh, pooling it together and putting it into use cases to more efficiently help a customer you know, run an environment based on utilizing that underlying uh, infrastructure that is really, um, it's relative, it's going to continue to advance, um, but the telemetry has existed since around 2007, but it continues to improve with more uh, sensors on the compute, network, and storage devices that are kind of pulling together this information. So you mentioned sensors in the SDI. Uh, how is IoT going to change Intel's data center strategy? Yeah, SDI has, uh, IoT? Mm. Yeah, IoT has a, a number of impacts. Mm. First, as a, as a user, IoT mm. has created an explosion of devices, whether it's thermostats to uh, sports equipment, and it's helped continue the, the increase in the amount of data center resources that are needed to coordinate all the devices that are, that are out there. I think Intel's mission is to get compute in smaller and smaller packages, and that's helped the ability for IoT to build more business models and new products that take advantage of those sensors. And the data center is consuming all that uh, information and more apps are being created to manage that. So that's one side of IoT. The other uh, piece of IoT is that each of the infrastructure devices within the data center has more uh, sensor capability. So a server and a, a blade and a network equipment and storage equipment has more ability to report out what they're doing. It's health information, it's about their fans, it's about the memory capacity, uh, it's about the, uh, the power in real time that they're consuming, and the temperature of that device, so that if there's a problem, you can more predictively analyze and do something about it you know, before it becomes a bigger issue. Okay. So you mentioned building smaller and smaller computing packages. How small can you actually go with these things? Well, I think Moore's Law, and depending on what you're looking for, you know, do you need a GPS in that device? Okay. Uh, there's there a gyroscope there? I think Intel this past year for the Olympics has put, uh, has a team that's working with, at least in the Winter Olympics, where we could put these devices onto snowboards so that you could see and model, you know, how many turns did they do? What is the speed that they uh, were achieving? What's the impact that they had when they hit the snow? So there were really uh, taking the existing set of uh, performance indicators for sports and taking it to a new level with additional uh, data that we're providing from these devices. So I think uh, as Moore's Law you know, continues to advance, depending on what you're looking for in that package, you know, we can get pretty small. Can you go up like, to nanoscale sort of like size-ish I, I, you know, in that, the future? The future is unknown. Yeah, I think at, at that point, I think it's, uh, it's the ability to you know, create something that has um, you know, the power capability in addition to the features that you're looking for. Okay, and then, so you oversee the global Intel data center strategy. What's the strategy for the EMEA and specifically for the Nordic regions? Um, what's, what's coming in the next, let's say, 12 months, 24 months? Well, the, the group that I manage is data center solutions, so we do yep. software for the data centers, and our premise is uh, to ensure that these customers are aware of 
the capabilities that they have in their infrastructure and how is Intel going to be able to help them to manage that more efficiently, efficiently lowering their costs, making sure that it's operated more effectively. So in this environment, we see a lot of colos in the northern uh, Nordics. So there's really two areas there. We offer the ability for a colo to make sure that they're more fully utilized. That's often the problem with a colo is that if they are not fully uh, committed with customers or they have existing customers that aren't utilizing their infrastructure fully, they have a lot of devices that are on and consuming power, but they might not be doing much. So we can help them manage and not turn off those devices, but sip power with the power cap, lower the amount of uh, power that they're consuming, and then we can dynamically turn the compute back on when they have a workload that's, uh, that's needed for the data center. So that's one area. The other is that we've had colos that are offering the tools that we provide as a service. Mm -hmm. So when you go in and you have a SaaS model with a colo, yep. they have another line item that says, do you want to monitor your infrastructure, health, power, um, all the uh, environmental uh, characteristics, mm -hmm. and they can offer that as another SaaS uh, you know, adder mm -hmm. to their existing um, service offering. Mm -hmm. So then changing topics slightly, not completely changing the topic slightly, but millennials are a big topic at the moment. They're coming into the workplace, they're going everywhere, I'm sure there's a few hundreds already working for Intel around the world. How have millennials changed your team and your business strategy itself? And when I mean this, I mean from actually changing the physical space in the office yeah. to adopting a new strategy to, to actually grow up with the millennials and their demands, because it's, sure. it's quite... <laughs> yeah, I think there are a number of great things that the millennials bring to uh, our environment. From a work perspective, it's you know, really not being rigid with schedules, it's not being rigid with your environment, it's being more open and, and communicate communicating and having uh, groups pulled together rather than the cubicle type environment. We have open workspaces now um, that have been uh, you know, amplified and accelerated because of that, that uh, influence from the millennials. So I think that piece is, is, is built a more collaborative environment. I think at the same time, there have been initiatives around uh, charity organizations and how that focus um, for you know, bringing the uh, benefit for our, ourselves, we're talking about the financial aspect of saving the data center money, but there's a green aspect to this as well, that we have some uh, data centers that don't have enough electricity supply in order to, uh, to focus and to bring enough power to their data center. So the millennials have you know, helped us to become you know, more green aware and work with more green organizations in that, in that way. And then from a consumer of devices, from an application perspective, I think that also contributes to the growth of the data center because they are, you know, they live online and their applications really uh, fuel, you know, their their daily activities. So that contributes to the back end data center, you know, providing the infrastructure to fuel that that continuing, you know, desire for uh, the online, you know, apps and capacity that they're consuming. Okay, and we can only imagine what Generation Z and X will do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, Jeff, for talking to me. Uh, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and visit the website on www.data-economy.com.